I'm here at Rippleton Public School in North York. This coming Wednesday, the Toronto District School Board of Trustees will be voting on whether kids from four brand new condo developments will be coming to this school. They live about 20 minutes away. The reason? There's no room in their local school. We want them to be able to walk to school. We want community schools. We know that's best for families. We know it's best for the environment. We know it's, you know, sitting on a school bus for long periods of time is not, it's not, you know, the gold standard. Students from four new condo buildings being built in Midtown Toronto were supposed to go to their local Eglinton Junior Public School, but there isn't enough room. It's currently at 88% capacity, projected to be at 108% capacity by 2031. This is why in a couple of months, at least 35 new students from these developments could be coming to Rippleton Public School, which is about seven kilometers away. We don't have space, especially in Midtown Toronto, where there's been development after development after development after development. And we've done so many different things to try to make space in our schools from grade changes to boundary changes. The question is, why build new condos in a space where there aren't adequate services like nearby schooling? We reached out to the city for a response and Toronto's chief planner wrote in part, the planning, acquisition and delivery of the spaces are the responsibility of the school boards based on each board's accommodation planning processes, related business cases, and provincial funding. The funding approach may require schools to make separate requests to the province for their facilities. Councillor Josh Matlow says the current system is problematic. The development lobby donates a considerable amount of money to the government. They support their elections. And what we've seen is payback where the province wants more and more condos built, but they don't ensure that enough parks, infrastructure, and services like school capacity can meet the growing demand. In this case, a parent whose child attends Rippleton Public School says, while it is a far way to travel from Young and Eglinton, the news isn't all bad for prospective parents. Oh, wow, that would be probably a crowded uh, and a good thing for them. This is a really good school. <laughs> And I have my son from uh, two years, and he's doing great. TDSB trustee Rachel Chernis Lynn says a new school is desperately needed in the Young and Eglinton area for up to 1,200 pupils. She adds while Rippleton won't be overcrowded, there are consequences for the potential transfer. This will require one more bus, we estimate, to go to Rippleton. And there's a cost attached to that, aside from the, the cost for families in terms of their lifestyle, their ability to walk to school, the convenience and all of that, having a neighbourhood school. The matter will be voted on for final approval this coming Wednesday by the Board of Trustees. The trustee we spoke with expects the motion to pass as this is the closest school with enough space. At Rippleton Public School, Malia Sheikh, City News.